Hey guys, welcome back to today's episode of 10 Minute Kick-Ass Coaching where we're going to discuss goals and what it means to you going into next year, 2018, and the importance of maintaining your goals and making sure that um, they are being tweaked and maintained just like the motor on a car to make sure the oil's maintained, make sure the fluids are maintained, make sure the belts are in solid shape. Are you doing that for your business? Are you doing your little uh, tune-up to your business to make sure you're positioned for your growth next year? So that's what we're going to discuss today. I had a great conversation with the guys over at NORP um, today and Whitney, and uh, it went about an hour. We discussed strategic planning and goals, strategic planning in the aspect of your business health. So one of the things I wanted to uh, give you kind of an idea, and, and you're welcome to please feel free to comment below, is I'm a big believer in planning your goals every six months and reviewing your business plan every six months. So a business plan to me is a temporary but long-term solution. What does that mean? It means in the easiest terms possible that um, I plan for the year, then I plan for five years. I plan for 10-year plan, where I want to be in five and 10 years. Those are more, those are very long-term solutions, but to me, long-term is a year. It's not short-term. Short-term is a week, a month, whatever the case is. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do next month? How are you going to promote, plan, and market, and position your company for in a month? That's short-term. Long-term is what you're going to do over the next 12 months. So we're planning long-term. My big philosophy is making sure, again, that you review it every six months and you rewrite or update what needs to happen every six months. So let's say, for example, your business is focused on one particular product or service. We're going to make this simple with work in the industry I'm in, disaster restoration. Disaster restoration has a lot of different variables to it. It has uh, water damage, fire damage, mold, uh, 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 hazardous waste cleanup, a whole bunch of different variables, but all are a different section of the business. So in your business plan or in your planning for what you're going to do, you have to have each section spelled out separately and the performance that you want to see out of the business and of course how you're going to get there. If we're going to market a water damage business, what is our market share? How are we going to do it? What's going to be the strategy behind it? If we're going to market a fire damage restoration business, if we're going to market a carpet cleaning business, how are we going to get there? What are the objectives? What do I want to see in six months? What do I want to see in a year? And you update it. Now, your original one is built built out for one year with an update in six months. Realizing in six months, you've got to come back to that and see, are there changes that have to be made? Are there things that have to be done differently? Um, what needs to be done to keep you as current as humanly possible? And that's really the key. So you want to make sure that whatever you do, you, you know where you're at at the time of making a decision. So make sure that your plan is put into separate divisions and each division has its own strategic plan in order to get there for next year. And that plan could be um, if we, based on last year, we did, let's say, a million dollars in sales. That's what we use as an example on NORP today. Uh, we, we talked about a million dollars and you had enough equipment and you're trying your disaster restoration company. It's strategically toward, well, specifically, I should say, toward water damage. You had enough equipment and you had enough customers and enough work came in but your technicians, uh, there was a disconnect between the office and the technician, or technicians didn't technically know what they were doing, even if doing the job. They knew that somebody said to them, hey, Joe, Mary, you gotta do this, but they don't know why. So you wanna make sure you invest in your technicians. Your technicians, your employees, they are the front line of your business, as Steve Tuburin says, they are, they are the biggest impact and your biggest resource and the biggest value in your business, because if you go to sell it, at some point in time, they want things in place so the owner can duplicate what you've done and, and pay back the investment that he's invested in your business and get a return as quick as possible. And the only best way he can do that is having the resources in front of him. The biggest resource you have is your people. So that's a very viable part of your business plan going forward is your people, your staffing, where you plan to be at, where you need to change, where you need to update all those things. When it comes to your marketing, which is a different section of that, you want to invest in marketing into a sales rep or a marketing rep out in the field. What are the specific criteria you want to attain for the upcoming year? You take your benchmark from last year. Now, if you don't have a benchmark to start from scratch, it's a little bit different. So I, I won't get into that today because that's di definitely a completely different subject. But there are ways um, that we discussed on Orb that you can actually do that with. Um, you want to discuss how much of the marketing was done, what was affected, effective, um, did we get a return on investment for how much we marketed this person, did we make sure this person was was uh, 
impacted enough? That means did we talk to them enough? Did we send enough messages? Not too much, not to be over redundant, but to make sure that we were in Toma, we were top of mind awareness with them at all times to be able to refer us just like the person that called today and of course called my cell phone first because it's a project. It's not just a regular job. It's something that's more involved. So he's calling me to say, I have a project for you. I need your expertise. This is what it is. And that's where I'm headed into New York right now. So uh, make sure you have all of those things decided between your employees, your marketing, your share, your infrastructure. Here's another part, like we talked about, your equipment. Let's say you have drying equipment, dehumidifiers, fans, whatever the case may be. It could be a copier in an office. It could be whatever it is. It's getting antiquated. It's the end of its life. The belts, like belts on a motor, are ready to break. They're, ready, they're cracked and they're ready to break. And you know they're going to break. You just don't know when. you got to plan for that and say, I've got to replace the, break, the belts now so I don't have a problem when I hit my peak, when I hit my biggest opportunities. So make sure 110% of your time is spent, without a questionable doubt, planning and strategizing. Do you need to invest more in infrastructure, equipment, your supplies, your hard costs, your computers, whatever the case is, you've got to make sure that that is updated. It's your people, it's your marketing process. This is all part of what I talked about the other day when I talked about the piece of the pie. Every different variable of that pie, let's just say there's eight slices, we figure out how those eight slices are cut. Are some cut bigger and are some cut more narrow, depending on how the business is. We know that we have to have all the pieces in there in order to form that pie, so it won't move around very much and be and will sustain itself. We know if we're missing a piece of pie or a section is missing, we know that pie is going to break down and become what's called deficient in the engineering world. It's not going to hold itself. It's not going to maintain itself like a bridge that's having a problem. So I know it's a lot to get across in a very short period of time. Make sure you plan, manage your goals. Make sure you update your goals. Make sure you sustain it. Make sure if you set bars and criteria that you attain and you maintain that criteria. If you don't put those things in there and implement and do those things, they will not happen. That is 100% guarantee that nothing will happen without it. So that's today's episode of 10 Minute Kick-Ass Coaching, the last one for the year. Yeah, baby. We're going into 2018. So take everything you've kind of learned over the past several weeks and take what we talked about today and it's a little late to plan for the year but it's better late than never <laughs> if you haven't already done it make sure you spend the time to plan your business plan your goals and make sure you have a strategy to implement in order to make this happen you guys have a rocking new year's eve i'll be spending with my family and i really appreciate your time i appreciate being here every single week feel free to comment feel free to add anything it's the reason that i'm here is because of you and, and the, 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 what you bring to this group, what you can bring in comments, what you can bring in subjects that need to have covered, that's where this group grows and has grown exponentially, um, basically overnight. And I, I really attribute that to the content that's being delivered and the interaction we're having with all of our members. So thank you so much. Have a great New Year's Eve. See you soon. Bye.